We have now set the entire groundwork for making the object pooling to fully work. So now we need to go to the object pooling manager and we have to make the get bullet method to work. And how are we going to do this? Let's take off these two lines. We want to iterate over all of the prefab instances that we have loaded here and we need to check if either of them, if any of them, are inactive because if it is then that's the bullet that we're going to use. So to do this we're going to type for each game object bullet in bullets. That's an easy way to make a loop. We're simply going to check that list for all of the bullets that we have. Now we check if bullet dot active in hierarchy. This is a property that says basically if the game object is active in the scene. Okay, but instead of checking if it's active, we want to check if it's inactive. So we add an exclamation mark in the beginning of this statement. Okay, so we check if we have anything inactive. If this is the case, then this is the bullet that we want to use. So the first step is we're going to make it act active by typing bullet dot set active and pass true as a parameter. So the bullet is going to be back to its uh, how it should be. And after that, we type return bullet. Okay, but there is a problem here. Maybe all of the bullets are being used, so we are going to iterate over all of them. None of them are going to be available because they're all already in the scene and then hey we have to return something. If we reach this state then it means we should instantiate another bullet. So we can just grab the code that we made here for making a new uh, prefab. Okay, we can just copy that and paste here. We're making a new, a new bullet. There is no need to, to use this set active here. So we basically make a new prefab instance uh, we set its parent to be the object pooling manager and finally we store it in the bullets array, in the bullets list. And after we do this we type return prefab instance. Okay, so that's going to return uh, what we just added. Okay, we're going to basically add the bullet. And back in the player, instead of using this instantiate method call here, we're going to use the get bullet from the object pooling manager. So I'm going to paste it here. Alright, so now the bullet object is spawned by using the object pooling manager. I'm going to remove the reference for the bullet prefab. The player no longer uh, does need to know what is the exact prefab. And in the bullet, there is one important step here. Instead of calling destroy game object, okay, instead of removing the bullet from the game entirely, we're going to type game object dot set active false. Otherwise, the bullet would disappear after it has been instantiated, and then it would happen over and over again. Okay, so we did all of these changes. Let's test them out. I'm going to save that and let's go to Unity. Wait for the compilation to be complete. I'm going to change the bullet amount to two. Okay, and I'm going to press play. So if we go to the look at the object pulling manager, we have two bullets. If I shoot one, uh, you see that it got active and then deactivated. But then if I click again, the bullet quickly blinks in the screen. So why is this happening? If you go to the bullet script, you're going to see that the live timer is, is only set in the start method. And very important to, under, to know is, the start method is only called when the object is instantiated. But since this is going to be pulled, we're going to change the start to on enable. Or on enable. So let's give this a try. Okay, I'm going to save this. Let's go to Unity. Wait a little bit more. And we're going to press play. Okay, I'm going to click here and yes, on enable is the case. And now every time I click, the duration is set back to its original state, okay, to the entire lifetime. And take a look on the object pooling manager to see how things are working here. If I click, bullet one is instantiated. If I click twice, both of them are active, okay, because both of them are, well, we need two bullets in this case, okay. We're basically reusing bullets, no longer we are instantiating, we're just retrieving from the pulling manager. If I click several times, new bullets are adding to the pulling manager. So I can click four times very quickly and it's going to use all of the bullets available, okay. So basically you can click like crazy very, very frequently and the bullets are going to be reused. No more memory allocation, no more, uh, al there's no more uh, a very large amount of processing involved into adding these bullets and now you can pretty much see the limit that you have here. So seven bullets, but let's change that to eight just to make sure. Okay. So the game is going to have a little time to load in the beginning, but that's going to save you a lot of time in the future. And it's going to make sure that the game is going to be, uh, well, very efficient.